Um, all right, so I'm going to start uh, my presentation. My name is Toshi Hirabayashi. Um, I like to thank Stephanie and uh, Sean uh, uh, for inviting me to this session. Um, I'm delighted to uh, introduce my uh, uh, talk regarding uh, Hibsa 2 extended mission. I newly added uh, new co-authors, uh, Yeji Kim and Ryota Nakano, uh, my students who also contributed to this work. Um, they actually have um, uh, lightning talks in this session, so please stay tuned. Okay, so regarding the uh, background of extended mission, uh, when you look at the spin period distribution, as a function of asteroid diameter, you can see very clear, uh, interesting trends, especially when you look at the 200 meter diameter line, uh, there is a clear transition. So if you look at the larger asteroids, uh, you can see uh, uh, clear uh, a spin limit, which is around 2.2 hours. By this, we can consider these asteroids are rubble piles. On the other hand, if you look at smaller asteroids, uh, they can actually spin faster. Um, because of this, we can interpret that they would be either rubble piles or uh, monolith. Uh, monolithic uh, bodies. Well, by rubble piles, I mean rubble piles with cohesion. Potential explanation of this distribution may be Europe effect. Another explanation may be impact-driven disruption. When you look at um, space exploration missions targeting asteroids comet, you can see clear bias. So all of them targeted large asteroids and comets, but there's no uh, space exploration mission targeting smaller asteroids. However, I want to emphasize that there are the most common objects in the solar system, and then it is very hard to observe them by using ground telescopes and even space telescopes. So it is very critical to explore them directly. Hayabusa 2 extended mission is a small body rendezvous mission that uses the already flying Hayabusa 2 spacecraft. Um, the spacecraft is currently flying without no critical issues. The mission is planned to continue until early 2030s. We have just started the mission recently. The rendezvous target is asteroid 1998 KY26. Um, the shape is reported to be spheroidal. Um, the equivalent diameter is around 30 meters. The spin period is 10.7 minutes. The tumbling mode has not been observed yet. The taxonomy is related to darker materials, including carbonaceous materials. Because of the fast spin, KY26 is expected to have unique geological and geophysical conditions. When you look at stress condition uh, on the uh, top right, um, you can see the stress field almost positive everywhere. By this, the body always experiences tension. However, if you look at the stress field, uh, it doesn't go up to even 10 pascals. That mean is that the structure can be supported by weak cohesion. This finding implies a potential structural condition, which is either monolithic structure or rubble pile with cohesion. I must say that Yeji is going to give a detailed analysis for this, so please stop by her poster. Loose materials may not exist in surface regions unless there is a cohesion. So if you can observe uh, grains and pebbles on the surface, that indicates the existence of cohesion. 
fractures, craters, and other geomorphological features correlated with uh, this asteroid's evolution. Also, because KY26 is small, solar radiation pressure can easily perturb the asteroid's orbit. So the perturbation driven by solar radiation pressure may be around 40 kilometers one year after the arrival of this spacecraft. So this magnitude is much, much higher than the uh, orbital determination uncertainty. So we would be able to determine this effect at high precision. The flyby target is asteroid 2001 CC21. The shape is elongated. The equivalent diameter is around 700 meters. Spin period is around five hours. The tumbling mode has not been observed yet. The potential taxonomy is L. I like to mention about the mission phases. So the first Earth swing by operation was done in 2020, and then it was successful. After that, it will take six years for spacecraft to arrive, CC21, and then it will fly by this asteroid. During that time period, it will conduct remote sensing observations. After that, the spacecraft coming back to the Earth to conduct another Earth swing by in 2027. It will depart from the Earth, but coming back to the Earth again in 2028 to conduct the final Earth swing by operation. After that, it will go to uh, KY26 directly. During the long-term cruise phase, the spacecraft will conduct zodiacal light and exoplanet observations. I like to mention the Hexa 2 extended mission will contribute to exploring key planetary defense and science questions. Such key questions include how do tiny asteroids exist in the near Earth region and influence the Earth Moon system? How do the most common objects look like? And how can we mitigate potential risks of these asteroids coming to the Earth? Finally, I want to mention that the spacecraft is definitely getting older, so it is necessary to monitor the spacecraft carefully, and uh, we need a careful mission planning, but the extended mission team will continue to dare best to explore uh, these questions. By this, I want to stop my qu uh, presentation and take questions. Thank you. Thank you so much for that excellent talk and it's really exciting uh, extended mission opportunity. Uh, so we have a little under two minutes for uh, any questions. Uh, if anybody wants to type something in the chat um, or otherwise uh, we could save it for the um, later discussion period, um, but feel free to start asking questions there. Um, but I can start with a question. Um, so what would this spacecraft potentially reveal about the asteroid that our current remote sensing capabilities are just not capable of showing us. Say that again, please. So, so what it, uh, what about this close uh, flyby opportunity? Would what would we be able to learn that remote sensing from the ground, from the Earth, um, wouldn't be able to tell us about the asteroid? Yeah, thank you so much for this question. Definitely, uh, we would be able to get higher resolution images. So we plan to have. Um, uh, uh, visual uh, 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 camera imaging and uh, spectroscopic analysis. And uh, we have uh, thermal imaging uh, imagers as well. So we would be able to get higher resolution images and uh, we would be able to see very detailed uh, geomorphology and uh, surface conditions as well. So we are very excited to go there to see the details. Great. Um, I think Sean has a quick question. Yeah, just very quick. Uh, uh, because of the fast rotation, I think it would be very challenging to 
for example, characterizes thermal inertia. Do you plan, is this in, in, in the plan of doing so? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, we definitely uh, assessing right now. So definitely the, 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 the mass itself is very small. So um, first of all, uh, it is necessary to understand the mass. And then in order to understand the mass, we need to characterize or plan you know, the, the location of the spacecraft. So uh, what we have to do is to careful, uh, you know, the mission planning to be able to measure these uh, parameters, um, given, you know, the small bodies, like I said, um, our uh, mission plan uh, that we have done for, for example, Ryugu uh, doesn't apply. So we need to do a careful assessment. Well, thank you so much for this question. All right. Great. Thank you again.